This is Drinking Night, a VR chat world with its own culture. People come here to play party games and take shots with friends or strangers, and hopping into a public instance means you'll meet plenty of this. But VR drinking culture is much more expansive than just this. Parties and gatherings are happening at every time of the day of any day. Alcoholism is a well-known problem in any part of everyday life, but what about VR in particular takes a socially anxious wallflower and turns them into a party-obsessed addict? This is a deep dive into the drinking problems of VR chat and the culture that encourages it. Hey guys, it's Fia, and welcome to The Virtual Reality Show! It doesn't take long after being indoctrinated into VR chat to realize it's an awesome experience with so many potentials. Fascinating enough, in fact, to spark this entire channel. But of course, there is a backside to every coin, and that's what I'm going to speak about today. I had my 21st birthday in VR chat last year, but not long after this, I realized that some of my friends were drinking every time I saw them. And when I say every time, I mean every time. And then they'd also tell me stories from the crazy party last night that they went to where everyone else was also drinking. I realized the more time people spent in this game, the higher chance of them obsessively drinking on a regular basis became. Now this isn't the case for everyone, but I realized how different it is going out to house parties or bars versus messing around at home with a headset on. Because of this observation, I put out this tweet. And let's just say that a lot of people had things to say about this, and most of it wasn't positive. There's both pros and cons to be pointed out here. From how it's way safer and cheaper to the temptation of ease of access. Which is why I want to analyze all the benefits and drawbacks today. Between all of this, I'll be interviewing one user named Clarity, who last year developed a VR drinking problem and straight up almost died from it before being hospitalized. Now let's compare IRL to VR. Safety. For anyone, the potential of being taken advantage of or getting thrown into a sketchy situation while in such a vulnerable state is erased. The only trunk driving you gotta do is stumble four feet to your bed and crash there. You also save an incredible amount of money going to a VR bar rather than a real one. One bar drink can cost $12, which you might get three or four of over the course of the night. You still have the tip and then add on the Uber cost and you're looking at spending like a hundred bucks in a single night. But buy yourself a 12 pack of literally anything and you're looking at like $20 for the whole night. But here's where the problems arise. Because VR drinking is so convenient, cheap, and safe, it's a lot easier to be encouraged to do it on a regular basis. The key factor here is that there's no limitations on how far you can take social drinking habits. I wasn't really necessarily a social butterfly. With VR chat, it's like, I, I I don't have to physically show who I am. The thing that I would say about VR that's different from IRL, if you're causing problems, they will kick you out. And at that point in time, you're completely cut off. But with VR chat, it's not like anybody's really stopping you. They can kick you out of the instance, but you're still there. You can go wherever you want. If you're alone like I was, where nobody is there to stop you, period, I could have kept on going and drinking until I have died, and I almost did do that. Now, Clarity had no problems with alcoholism prior to VR chat. It's when they lost their job and went through a breakup that they were spending every waking moment from dawn to dusk alone using VR as escapism from their life, which many IRL alcoholics do as well. But in VR, the drinking goes on 24-7. It's people from all over the world in every time zone in this game, and there will always be people in Drinking Night Worlds to encourage you. I was spending almost every single free second in VR anyways. There is escapism almost like physically. You completely lose all sense of time. And you don't even realize exactly how much you're drinking like, like I did. I would just be on VR chat all day and I would wake up and have no idea where I was. And that was pretty much the entire month of July of last year that I did that. I want to say I spent roughly close to somewhere around like $1,200 just in that month alone on alcohol. At that point in time, I was, I was, desperate for anything. Peer pressure for drinking isn't something new either. Being the only sober one at a party makes self-restraint not easy. 
nothing new. But if your viewer group of friends is getting on to get wasted every night together, that's where the cultural problem lies. These are VR chat addicts. They aren't bad people. Some of them might be really cool, actually. But I've firsthand seen the amount of encouragement that happens in these circles, and the problem is, you don't even realize how drunk you are until you take off the headset. It makes you super immersed. It'd basically be the same thing as like if you have like a drunk heckler, you, you know, in an IRL bar, like like hey yo, like you, you should totally drink more, like get drunk with me, like get f***ed up. The difference is is that like I you know I've seen people that are like you know quote unquote like veteran and legendary users in there. And the only thing that will make them have a better time is if they get more people f***ed up to have fun with them. There are some people that are very impressionable, very gullible. And some people get in, put into places and take in worlds and do things they really didn't want it in the first place. Now before we go any further, I do want to make one thing clear. Drinking at the end of the day is your choice, and knowing your limits is your responsibility. If you enjoy drinking, then by all means do it and have fun. I love drinking in VR, I think it's awesome. But here's what happens when you cave into the extreme escapism culture and temptation of drinking in VR. I could not physically eat or drink anything, regardless of if it was booze and I wanted it at the time. They did testing on me. My liver was basically 35% larger than it needed to be. They checked my blood glucose over and over again, and I was registering around like 220. That's basically constitutes the UR diabetic. My blood alcohol levels at that point in time, whenever they took me to the hospital, I was around like 0.3. I definitely did damage on my body and I very well could have killed myself via alcohol. The biggest part of it that helped fix me aside from the physical part was finding better people that would tell me no if I was craving something like that. Health is wealth, you know? That's, your body is your temple. You have to take care of your body. Um, don't let yourself become lost in the escapism that is VR chat and neglect your own personal health like I did. Take care of yourself out there, okay? With that said, I'm not trying to judge or harp on anyone, but rather bring awareness to this topic to the VR chat community and hopefully help some people. But this isn't all of VR chat, and you shouldn't be scared of this game. But it's a good reminder for both inside and outside of it to pick good friends and know your limits. If you're interested in some of the positive highlights of social VR, check out my videos on things like clubs, dancers, and dating, and of course, sub for more. I'm actually commissioning a virtual reality show, Studio World, that's close to completion, and anyone who joins my virtual VIP tier on Patreon will have special perks in this world. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I've been your host, Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Special thanks to this one's Patreon members and virtual VIPs, Aeolin, Black Amethyst, Clarity VR, Diamond, Imaginary X, Kaze Ryu, Nair, Neoplasm, Score Maller, Snake 8 Head,